As life-saving vaccines roll out during the pandemic, black and Hispanic Americans, often essential workers, are finding themselves once again underserved. A recent AP analysis looked at 17 states and two cities and found that black residents are being vaccinated at significantly lower levels than the general population. In North Carolina, black people make up 22 percent of the population and 26 percent of the health care workforce but only 11% received the vaccine. While their white counterparts make up 68% of the population, but 82% have been vaccinated. Earlier tonight, I spoke with emergency physician, Dr. Darian Sutton, and Boston community organizer, Reverend Liz Walker, about the racial disparities in how and who we vaccinate. Thank you both for joining us. Glad to be here. Dr. Sutton, let me start with you. Um, you've been on the front lines in L.A. where the COVID-19 death toll is hitting black and Latino communities the hardest. Do you worry that the current vaccine rollout will continue to leave these communities behind? Absolutely. Um, from the numbers that we're seeing now, as by what is actually reported from less than half the states, there is a clear disparity in the proportion of the amount of vaccine that's being delivered to black and brown communities relative to white communities. And what I fear is that as time goes on, we'll start to we'll continue to see the high risk of COVID-19 to black and communities, while we also see the low amount of vaccination. And so I think it will create a, a, a more increased disparity between the two. And Reverend Walker, you're a former journalist and a, a reverend. In December, you organized a Zoom meeting with Dr. Anthony Fauci for your congregation. And you told Nightline at the time that you had hoped it would help get trust for the vaccine. Tell us about the root history historical causes of this mistrust. Uh, this current situation is, is a perfect example of why people are, are distrustful of what's going on. Certainly our history with uh, situations like the Tuskegee study uh, where 625 men unknowingly uh, were used for a U.S. government syphilis study. So over and over and over, people are traumatized. And now the vaccine rollout, just what Dr. Sutton was saying, the numbers are appalling. Part of that may be hesitancy, but also part of that is just a disparity, it seems, uh, between what we were promised and what's actually happening. There is still so much to overcome. And Dr. Sutton, I'm curious, do you think that the fact that there's such a small percentage of black doctors impacts healthcare in the black community, not just writ large, but during COVID? Absolutely. What it comes down to is a level of communication, whether that be between a doctor and their patient or on a, a, a larger scale within media. Uh, as physicians, as black physicians, we represent only about 5% of physicians in total, and that number has not changed since the 1970s. And, and that issue, I think, creates this continued issue of the lack of, of communication between communities of color and physician groups. If we're not represented in these physician groups, then it becomes more of an obstacle and more difficult to create that trust and that level of rapport um, that I think has good outcomes in it. But unfortunately, it is it is quite a tall uh, feat to, to, to accomplish. And Reverend Walker, you've talked about making vaccines more accessible to black and brown communities by bringing them into those communities. How successful have you been in bridging the gap and what tools have you seen to be most effective? Well, it's very early now because there's a lot of confusion about the rollout. But what we want to do is to take the vaccine to people. You have to make this a lot easier than it is right now. We understand this has never been done before in the world. And so this is a major undertaking and there's going to be hiccups. And I get that. But I think we have to make extra efforts in communities that have already, uh, you know, borne the burden of this uh, of this COVID-19. So you have to really make it a little, a lot easier for people to get the vaccine. And that's not the case right now. And as a reverend, would you be in favor of bringing the vaccine into a non-traditional sites like houses of worship? Absolutely. And I know that's difficult. I know that's hard, but that's what I think we have to do. I think we have to take it into the community, take it to churches, take it to housing developments. You really have to make it a lot easier than it is right now. And Dr. Sutton, how can folks like Tyler Perry and others play a role in gaining trust in the community? 
Well, I think that there's a couple of ways that you can gain that trust. Number one, understanding the root issue, which is that as physicians, as healthcare providers, it is a question of whether, not, not why uh, people are not trusting us, but are we being trustworthy from this raw history, from the research that has been done, and from the, the actual work that we have put in. I think people like Tyler Perry has set a good example of ways to bring that level of communication within communities into a safe space outside of the hospital. And I have to agree with the Reverend. I think we need to step outside of the four walls of our hospital and get into communities to invest, to provide uh, research and education, and, 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 and at the end of the day, a uh, vaccine in people's arms. Dr. Sutton and Reverend Walker, thank you both for your time and your wisdom. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.